here I am in my not lab. It's nice and sunny, so I might as well do this outside. And I've got a new package from Farnell. Uh, it's got some stuff that I'm probably going to use the SPA266 and some other nice bits I decided to order on the way. In this case, I needed a voltage regulator, a 3.3 volt regulator. So I decided to buy some other interesting goodies with the, uh, the regulators. So let's have a look in this box and see what I've got. A solar fume extractor because at the moment I've just been opening a window. I built one a few years back but it gave up the ghost so I thought I needed a new one. And I'll do a video where I get that out properly. Uh, here are the regulators and these are TO220-1117 parts. You'll see more of these when I breadboard them up. We've also got an 80 tiny CPU so I bought myself uh, an 80 tiny 86 to play with. I've got, I've got plenty of Arduinos and I've also got some spare 328s, but I wanted to play with some of the other 80 tinies. This is the 80 tiny 85, which really is a tiny little four pin dip, and maybe I can use this to build some micro robots or for a Raspberry Pi project that I've not spoken much about yet, but I'm going to do a custom Raspberry Pi controller, and something like this might be at the heart of it. I wasn't going to leave you hanging on with this one, I thought we should get in and have a good look. This is a fume extractor, and it's suggested on the site that it's also a fume absorber. So remove solder fumes, helps reduce the likelihood of headaches. Now, if you're using lead-free solder, you end up having to use a higher temperature with the iron. Higher temperature means you get more fumes from the flux. So hopefully, this will mean there's fewer flux fumes, far less than you'd get just through a window. Let's have a look inside then, see what we've got. So, okay, there's the actual extractor. Let's get that off. And what appears to be, set of replacement carbon parts, maybe they're activated fibre, maybe they're just foam, but hopefully these will re reduce the amount of particulates in the air. Okay, we'll get rid of that because that's useless. It's already a fused plug so I don't need an extra fuse. Beautiful. Freestanding. Now there were models of these that were actually desk standing and I presume that it can be adjusted. Good, that's nice. There's an on-off switch here so I'm not just relying on the plug. That's excellent. Should do just the trick. Now, I'll plug it in later in the lab and we'll see how noisy it is because I really don't want something to drain out the camera and maybe my next solder job will need one of these. Okay, so we've now got the extractor wired up and we can see how loud it is. I might have to turn on and do a little bit of soldering to see actually how good it is at extracting anything. Let's turn it on. Well, it's loud but not too loud. It's not unacceptable. Uh, considering how windy and stormy it is outside, I think I can still hear the stormy wind outside more. Of course, the real test will be whether the microphone can actually pick up my voice over the sound of this. I hope that's not an issue. Um, I may be considering some better mic technology anyhow, uh, but let's see what it does when we solder. Okay, I didn't really have too much I wanted to solder right now, but since I need to demonstrate this fan, I thought I'd get one of the projects I was doing for the CNC. Now I've been actually getting some end stops made for the CNC, and that's just some micro switches that I'm going to use the 3D printer to make some clips for. And so they can be connected and disconnected to the actual control box on the CNC. I've gone with a very similar style for the plugs used for the motor. These are probably overkill but they kind of fit the existing style. I may later come to replace them with something much simpler. However, they'll do now for demonstrating that this, uh, how this will work with taking the solder fumes away. Uh, now I'm gonna put it on the other side. I hope I've got enough cable. The cable on this is a little pitifully short and that has been a problem. So I'll put it over here. Now I don't like having cables that are a little bit taut because that sets up things that might get tipped over. And the last thing you want to end up happening is having a soldering iron tip over on your leg. So let's go and give that some uh, the extra slap, Put that, that side of me as well. So this side of me there's a window, so we'll be able to turn this on there. And we'll power up the soldering iron, and we'll try putting one of these in. Now, I'm gonna probably need to do two things with this particular bit of cable. So I've bared this end of it. I'll just twist it up, because it's a bit of a mess there. So I'm going to need to tin this 
And then I'm going to need to get it into some solder cups. I hate solder cups. I'd always prefer crimpable connections. I couldn't find this in the local Maplin with anything but these solder cups. So uh, we'll just wait for my soldering iron to heat up. So this is uh, flux core solder. I suspect we want to get the extractor as close as we can to the job, so I'm not inhaling the fumes. Okay, let's see if this is actually hot enough to melt solder. Let's have a look. Just tin the end now. The end is actually pretty good there. We'll uh, just heat up this. I'm sure it's pretty obvious that this thing is doing the trick. Fumes coming in. Not a lot coming out, which means it must be actually absorbing the particulates. That is, it must be actually picking up whatever is in the flux, whatever smoke the flux is generating. Awesome! That's exactly what I wanted it to do. And I'm not actually smelling anything here, which is fantastic. And I'm sure I'm making more of a bob's job of this than I should. But it is in the spirit of my video blog, if I can do it, anyone can. Right, there we are. Okay, I've got a set of helping hands. Let's just get the tinned end of the wire. I'm just going to hold this wire in place because the last thing I want is this uh, these solder cups rattling off. Let's just get that right in there. Well, nobody can accuse me of making it look easy. I really don't. Okay, let's heat up this solder cup until I see the uh, tinned end of that wire start to flow. Get the solder in and the solder should... Now, my hand is between the solder cup and the extractor fan, and I'll be fair and say this room does currently now smell, well, like solder and all the other bits. Maybe this is tinned enough that all I need to do is flow that solder on that tinning there, and I'm still happy with where the fumes are going. They are all going into that extractor. Now, the other thing I'd like to know, and at some point this week when I use the uh, CNC again, is whether this will also take away some of the uh, dust from the CNC. Now, the CNC generates rather a lot of dust and probably needs a much bigger extractor than that. But if you remember, one of the problems I have is dust control because I don't have a large lab and I don't have room for any kind of industrial-sized dust control. But I do want to be able to use a CNC machine in my lab. Right, there we are. That'll do for an end stop. This fan works. Okay, I found one slightly annoying problem with this fan. I actually took down my little solder station that I'd set up, um, started putting other things away and thought I'd let the fan run for a while, and the room started smelling like the fumes of an old car. Now, I don't know about you, but I find that quite unpleasant. Possibly worse even than the smell of the solder and the flux itself. Petrol fumes from a slightly dishevelled banger. That's not really what you want. And to be fair, I'd rather at that point the smell of the solder fumes. Maybe I'm used to those smells. But this unpleasant old car smell, it might be to do with whatever activated carbon they're using here. That's a bad side effect and I've had to open all the windows to air it. Now I might try the same soldering job with the same solder and the same insulation to make sure it isn't something there that's made it. But at the moment, if you smell around the back of this, this smells like that. That's quite a bad sign and I think that might be, this might be returned on the basis of smelling like an old car being actually more unpleasant than the fumes I was trying to vent.